became a poet. Yeah. I'm sorry, poetry is just not big in the art scene these days. Oh, no, Poetry's I disagree. Poetry is important. But look at song, look at TV, look at this, look at that, look at the pop. I mean, I'm very glad that poetry still exists because it's an incredible art form. But in our age, poetry is... I know live theater has been marginalized, right? We're marginalized, and now we're even more marginalized, and we'll be even more marginalized. But poetry's even behind us, which is tra sad, which is tragedy, which is not as it should be. But that's the form. So, first, what is a poem? What is a poem? Well, okay, uh, the poem is uh, the uh, ingeniously, linguistically, uh, grammatically wrought order of words articulating in compact form uh, an emotion or an idea or, or both. Oh, I should add story, narrative, emotion, I idea, and and if you're lucky, all three in one, um, and that's what it is. And at the heart of it is the heart. At the heart of it is the blood, the pulse, the breath, the lungs, the mouth, which is why I believe you asked me earlier about print poetry versus spoken word poetry, so to speak, or oral based poetry. To me, this is a false distinction absolutely false distinction, which grew up because of the propaganda of the modernists. Ezra Pound, T.S. Idiot. <laughs> Ezra Poundage and T.S. Idiot. But, you know, my, my problem with, with, with uh, their propaganda, uh, which was important at the time, in the modernist movement, which I embrace. I mean, everybody's a modernist. If you're writing poetry, no, you're a modernist. Doesn't matter what genre, what kind of poetry you're writing, you're a modernist. Because they had to refashion the way poetry was being made because it had become, in terms of the Victorian and Georgian and Edwardian poetry, uh, fake and phony. A lot of cloying sentimentality as opposed to poets being able to deal with factory work, being able to deal with the work, the working class experience, being able to articulate minority experiences, experiences of, of women in very real and straightforward ways. Uh, the Victorian uh, uh, notions of language were, were very much uh, those of the corset and the straitjacket, which are Victorian inventions, not the corset, but the straitjacket is Victorian invention, right? I think it is. I think it is a Victorian invention. Somebody can Google this and tell me I'm completely wrong. But if it wasn't a Victorian invention, it should be. It should have been a Victorian invention. So I think for me it sums up the stereotypical ways to think about the Victorian era. But <clears throat> the contribution to poetry from the, from the Victorians while rich and deep and great, because he's got Browning in there, and, and he's fantastic. You know, Hopkins, you know, Hopkins could not be published until after Queen Victoria was good and dead, before everyone understood that he that his voice could be could be acceptable, um, because it was not acceptable for a Victorian audience. So he becomes a de facto uh, modernist. But to get to the point here, I I talk around all these points all the time, but but here it is, uh, uh, modernism overthrew, and, and it was a necessity to overthrow the idea that poetry can only be rhyme and meter. That w it was essential to get rid of that idea, because while that idea was around, it meant people writing a lot of, of properly formal bad poetry, properly formal sentimental dreck and BS of all sorts, uh, and just phony stuff, phony stuff nobody can get behind. Nobody could like it. Nobody could like it. It, sh it should have been. It should have been read to prisoners, <laughs> as, as, as former as, as extra punishment. Right. You're just getting going. Come yeah, on. It, it, it's just really bad. So how much don't you like Victorian poetry? Well, I do a like lot. a lot of it, but but the stuff that became popular was deadly. And and what really killed Victorian poetry is not so much or the Victorian mode of writing poetry it was not so much the modernist. It was World War One. Because uh, you needed a Wilfred Owens to come along, Siegfried, Sa Siegfried Sassoon to come along to talk about the horrors of trench warfare. It was impossible to talk about the horrors of trench warfare when you had all that Victorian uh, sweetness and light and, and dreck going on. Impossible. So you needed Owens to come along and just blast it all open and say, look, I'm going to write sonnets, but not going to be anything like the sonnets you've ever read in school. Uh, my sonnets are going to be full of blood and guts and machine gun fire and poison gas, that's what you get. And all of a sudden, there's modernism right there, born with Wilfred Owen. I guess they also question the power structure. 
Oh yeah. The Victorian Absolutely. didn't question the power structure, whereas the new poetry questioned power. Yeah, I mean, charge of the light brigade. Uh, you know, you got to uh, you got to do your duty. Uh, there into the valley of death, rode the ten, rode the uh, thousand or the ten, ten thousand. Uh, yeah, uh, so there's Tennyson doing his duty for the empire. You know, thank you very much, right? And and uh, but but then Owens comes along and says, no, um, this is what it's really like, folks. This is what it's really like.